first plug the ethernet cable into one of the available LAN ports. That would be port one through four. On the computer, before you plug in the router, unplug everything that's connected to the main network. So turn off Wi-Fi and unplug the main ethernet cable and then plug in the router that you want to turn into a switch ethernet cable. And so now we need to find the IP address of that device. So if you're on Windows, go into command prompt and type in IP config and it'll tell you the router. Or if you're on Mac, you can go into system preferences, go into network and go to ethernet. And here it'll show you the router's IP address. So now go ahead and copy that, close out and go to your web browser and paste in the IP address and hit enter. Now it's going to ask you for the username and password. Since we set this to default, the username should be admin and the password should be admin. And that's the password. If you're not sure of what it is, Google the device and it'll tell you. So the first thing we want to do is configure its LAN IP address. And so we want to configure this so it doesn't conflict with our main router's IP address. And my main router's IP address is 192.168.0.1. So since the third number in the main router's IP address is zero, then this one also has to be zero. But this last one here can be any number other than one. I would recommend doing this number as far away as possible. So anywhere under 254. So this one I'm gonna do 249 and then hit apply and then hit continue and now the router should it won't load this page because that's not correct so in the URL change the one to a zero or whatever you change it to but if you kept it the same that's okay and then this one 249 and it's gonna ask for the username and password so it's admin and then admin still default and since it is default, let's go ahead and change the password. I would recommend doing this the same one as your main router. And hit apply. Now it's going to prompt you and to enter your new password. And hit login. Alright, so the last thing we want to do is head over to DHCP, hit disable, and hit apply. Hit continue. Now nothing should be functional, so the router should go kind of crazy because your device is connected. So disconnect your computer from the router. and then plug the router into the main router. And then you can plug your computer back into the router. And if you hit refresh, it should be fine because it's connected to the main router. To check if this is working, type in the IP address of your main router and it should load your router. And it did. So now we can plug in as many devices as we want or as many as the secondary router can support. So everything works and you just turned the router into a switch. To begin with, take your mobile device and check the signal strength of your Wi-Fi throughout your house. If you're on Android, you can download this app, which I'll have a link to in the description. Or if you're on iPhone, then you're going to have to use the Wi-Fi bars on your phone. And put the secondary Wi-Fi router where there's an Ethernet port and where there's the worst Wi-Fi signal. To configure the Wi-Fi router as a wireless access point to the main router to increase Wi-Fi performance, now you're going to want to go ahead and plug in the power cable into the wireless router and plug an ethernet cable from the wireless router to your computer. 
Now we need to access the router. So we need to find the router's IP address. So if you're on Windows, you can go to Command Prompt and type in ipconfig and find the router's IP address. Or if you're on Mac, you can go into System Preferences, Network, Ethernet, and then see what the router's IP address is. Then you want to open up a web browser and type in the IP address and hit enter. Here it'll prompt you for the username and password. Okay, so since we reset the router, it's gonna be the default. And so you're gonna to wanna to go to the internet and find what the default username and password is for the router. Mine is admin and then password. And then we are in the network manager or router manager. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and head over to LAN setup and change the IP address from 192.168.0.1 to 192.168.0.250. And the reason we're changing this is so that way it doesn't interfere with the main router and it follows along with its DHCP server. And the reason we're doing 250 is because that's close to the limit of the DHCP server's uh, ending IP address. As you can see here, this is what this router's was. So if it's at 250, we'll work our way down and go 249, 248 for each individual router or switch that we set up. Um, and then since the main router already has the DH DHCP server, we can disable this one by clicking the check mark and we'll change the device name to Netgear AP for access point. Uh, you can change the device name to whatever you want and then go ahead and hit apply. And now it's going to go ahead and update all the settings. Now you can disconnect your computer from the wireless access point but plug the wireless access point into the main router and so now you can connect back to the main router wait for it to connect open up your web browser and type in the IP address that we assigned to the access point and type in the username and password, the default one, and log in. So now the access point is connected to the main router, but it still has a different SSID and password. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. But before we do that, let's change this access points password so that way it corresponds with the main router so that way all your networking devices have the same password so let's go ahead and set password type in the default password and type in the new one and hit apply. Now it's gonna prompt you because your credentials changed. And log back in. All right, so now let's change the SSID and wireless settings. So let's go into wireless settings of your access point or router and this router is dual band, so it has both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So what I'm going to do is both of these, I'm going to change both of these SSIDs to the same one as the main router. This is what's going to allow you to um, not notice when the Wi-Fi network switch. So when you go to a, a bad Wi-Fi reception range in your house, where this is stationed, it'll automatically switch to the better Wi-Fi. So once your original hits um, one bar, it'll automatically switch to the new one, which will go to three bars. 
So change both of the SSIDs to the same one as your main router. And if you don't remember what those are, go ahead and log into your router. Go into the wireless settings. And this and this SSID on your main router should correspond with the SSID on your wireless access point. So that way there's a smooth transition between Wi-Fi routers. And then you want to have the same type of Wi-Fi password as your original. So in my original, let's go to see the password. In my, in my original router, I have it set to WPA or WPA2 and it's TIKP plus AES. So it's going to be this option right here. You have to make sure the security settings and SSID settings correspond with each other. And then the password should be the same exact password for the your original Wi-Fi network. So, so this password that you type in here should be the same password as your main router. So basically the same settings should be on your main router for the Wi-Fi as this one. And then hit apply. So now your Wi-Fi router should reboot and all your settings should be the same and you should have better Wi-Fi reception in that spot where you put that router. So what did we accomplish in this episode? Well, we learned about all the cables that are in a network. We learned about all the components that make up a network and we learned about all the basic configurations that you can have in a network. We also set up the main network with the main router and the ethernet switches and this is where everything is going to connect to. We learned how to reset any piece of networking equipment to factory settings. We used an old router without Wi-Fi and turned it into a switch so we can use one Ethernet cable to connect many things to. We used another old router with Wi-Fi and turned it into a Wi-Fi access point to increase Wi-Fi strength. Because when we connect our home automation gear, we won't be faced with the problem of bad Wi-Fi. Overall, we set up the perfect network setup with whole house Wi-Fi and Ethernet that is stable and reliable. Um, you're also going to need some sensors like a motion sensor, but I'll show you where to get those later. You're going to need some electronic tools such as a wire stripper.